Okay, so we've learned some tricks in the past about derivatives, and let's do some more. This time we're going to work with sine, cosine, tangent, e to the x, and natural log of x. Keep in mind that sine, cosine, and tangent, I've technically not really written them correctly, because sine on its own doesn't mean anything. It has to be sine of x or sine of theta. Same with cos. It means to be cos x or cos theta or cos of, I don't know, 2 pi over 3 or something. Same thing with tangent. But we have this exponential function, e to the x, and we also have ln of x. Now I've written this I've written this little L here as a curly one, just because if not, it looks like a 1. I always find my L's are hard to distinguish from 1's. So that's why I'm just going to write with a curly L, so natural log of x. So luckily we have a nice trick for it. So maybe I'm going to do another, yeah, I'll do another table like I did before. So f of x and f primed of x. So let's see how these look. Turns out sine, let's do sine of x, let's see. If we start with sine of x, turns out the derivative of sine of x is just cos of x. And that is really neat. What this means then, if I did a graph of, let's say I did this of sine of x, and I went like this, I drew one period of sine of x. Keep in mind, it keeps going forever in both directions. But uh, let's just say I looked at this right here. Well, it goes from 1 to negative 1. And this right here, well, it depends what scale I have, if I'm in radians or degrees. But let's say I'm in radian mode. This would be 2 pi over here. Now, what I could do, I could take a look at them. Well, what's the slope of this graph at this point? Oh, well, it's 0. And what's the slope of the graph at this point? Oh, it's some negative value. And over here, it's 0, the slope. For here, it's some positive value, right, because it's going up. Well, it turns out, look at the value of each of those slopes. And each of those slopes' values, turns out they match exactly the value of cos x, which means the derivative of sine x is the same as the values of cos x. That's kind of cool. And cos x, it turns out, is very similar. You might think it's just sine x, but it turns out it's got a negative in front. So that's all you have to remember. Now as far as tangent of x, that one is just the same thing as 1 over cosine squared of x. In other words, it's 1 over cos x times cos x. But often we write this as the notation cos squared of x. Now e to the x is kind of cool. Um, e to the x is its own derivative. As far as I know, that's the only function that does that. So e to the x, its own derivative is its own values. So it's the only function that is its own derivative. Well, that's kind of neat. And then we have natural log of x. Whoops, that was a really weird L that happened for some reason. So the natural log of x is just going to be 1 over x when we do its derivative. So these are the main tricks we need to use. So with these five different tricks here, so knowing about the function, the original function here, and this is its derivative, Again, keep in mind, derivative is the slope of the tangent at any point. Well, we can take a look here at an example then. So f of x equals 2 sine x minus 5 e to the x. And we're looking for the slope of the tangent at x equals 0. Now this thing is already written in calculus-friendly form, so we don't need to rewrite f of x. right? Because we've got everything in exponents, so everything's looking okay. So we can already start by finding f primed of x. Well, let's try it out. So we've got a 2 here, that's a 2, still hangs out. And a sine x, what happens with derivative of sine x? Sine x becomes cos x, that's its derivative. So it becomes cos x. Now I have a minus 5 here, that's just hanging out, and then e to the x. Well, what's the derivative of e to the x? If I go back, e to the x's derivative is still e to the x. So it's just 5 e to the x. Now this is the derivative of this graph at any point. I'm just fixing up the e here. So at any x value, this is the derivative. In other words, this is the slope of the tangent at any point. But we want to evaluate it at x equals 0. So that means then all we have to do is say f primed of 0 and replace all the x's with zeros. So 2 times cosine of 0 minus 5 times e to the 0. Now it turns out cosine of 0 is just 1. And if you don't believe me, I suppose we can take a look at it here. So cosine of 0 
is just one. It actually doesn't matter if you're in radian or degree mode. Although for this graph here, if I want to look at it, I need to make sure I press mode here and make sure I'm in radian mode, which I am. So I'm going to quit. So I've got that figured out. So two times cos of zero, well, cos of zero is just one. So that means one times two is just two. So that means already I can say that this is just going to be a two here. And e to the zero, well, anything to the zero is just a one. So one times negative five is just negative five. Therefore, my slope of my tangent at x equals zero is just going to be two minus five, which is negative three. So that should be my answer. Now, if we're not sure, I suppose we could always graph it. So let's go here and graph. So I'll use my TI-84 here and graph two times sine of x, and then I say minus 5 times, and I want e to the x, which is right here. So second, this one, and I just say x, and I press graph, and it's some crazy weird looking function. Look at that one, it goes like, whoa. So that's this weird function here, and maybe I can just do a little screen capture of it so we can take a look. It's always nice to see the graph when you're done. Um, so I'll just take this one right here and I'll just copy it and I will paste it. There we go. Just for the sake of being complete here. So there's my little function, x and y. And that means at x equals zero. So at this value of zero right here, I want, I want the tangent line at that point. So if I zoomed way in, you can see the tangent line would look something like, something like this, some sort of straight line like that. And what should its slope be? Well, the slope should be negative three. So that means if I picked two random points on this line, you know, rise over run should be negative three. And let's see if my calculator thinks that. So I'm going to go to this little blue calc here. So second there. And I choose number six, dy dx. And I type in just zero, and that implies x equals zero. And sure enough, my derivative is negative three. Thank goodness. That means I have done it right.